At the end of this video, you will have notifications inside your Flutter app, just like this. And if you want to put schedule notification, you will have also this option. Let's click on this three, two, one notification. So in this video, I will share with you everything you need from setting up the permission from Android and iOS and how to create the code in order to release the instant and scheduled notifications. Recently, I had to create an application that required scheduled notification for the day of the week, and it was a terrible process. It was such a nightmare to create, so I need to share with you everything that I have learned in order for you to create the notification inside your app as fast and as simple as possible. So let's start with the most boring part, which is the permissions. We will need to set this up for Android and iOS. For this, you can go on floodmap.com slash articles. And inside the article, you will find something called local notification, and we will follow this step-by-step -step tutorial. You will see it will be super simple. First thing first, we need to set up the notification. So let's start with the dependency. We will need the Flutter local notification, and we will need also the time zone. The time zone will be used for the scheduled notification. Okay, you will need this. So let's go back inside the code. Now let's go inside the popspec.yarn, and we will need to add this inside the dependency. What I do usually is command shift P and I say add dependency, and then I write the name of the dependency and I press enter, and this will add the dependency automatically inside my popspec.yarn. Now I need the time zone also, so I will say add dependency, time zone, and press enter. Perfect, so we have our two dependency, and now I will run the flutter pop get just like this inside the terminal, and you will say flutter pub get and press enter. So this will set up all the dependencies. All right, so next step is to go and run this inside your terminal, flutter pub get, that is done. Android permission. Let's start with this. So to push a notification inside your app, you will need this permission, okay? And we will set all of them together. If you want to know what the permission does, you can read the description right under, but what you need to understand is we will need to add these four permission inside the app source main Android manifest. So let me copy the first one and let's go inside the code. It will be app Android, Android app source main Android manifest. And this is where we need to add the permission right there. And it needs to be at the same level as application. So I added all four notifications, post notification, receive bootcamp, vibrate and access notification policy. Perfect. So now let's go back inside the article and you will see that this is how it should look like. And after this, we need to set up the receivers. What are the receivers? By example, when you reset your phone or when you update the application, you need to reset all the notification inside the application. So that is why you will need to have receivers. If you want to know more what each receiver is doing, you can read the description. It's up to you. So what we need to do next is to add this receiver, this receiver, and this one also. So let's start with the first one. I will copy this. I will go back inside the application. And now we will scroll down. And right after the name application, when it finished, we create the first receiver. Make sure that this is exactly the same uh, distance. So by example, I would click once and twice on the tab, and I will click once and twice. So you need this. So we have our first receiver. Now we need to add two other receivers. So I will put some place. And I will go back inside the Google Chrome or in the website. I will copy this and let's go back inside the code and paste this. Now you need to press the same number of tab as me. So one tab, two tab, two tab, two tab, three tab, one, two, three. Same thing for this one, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, and one. Perfect. So now we have our second receiver. Now let's go back and add the last one. So this one, copy and go back inside the code. We will add this right there. Now you press one, two and one, two. Perfect, so now we have all our receivers. You can save the file and close the Android manifest. Now, what we need to do is we need to set up this inside the, the iOS permission also. So you will see iOS permission is much simpler, but anyway, so this is how it should look like for your Android file for the receivers and this is how it should look like for the use permission perfect so you have a visual of what it should look like next you have the ios permission so let's start with this number one we need to add the permission inside the ios runner app delegate dot swift 
So we need to add three things, the import, the Flutter local notification plugin, dot set plugin, blah, 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 and the if available. Okay, so let's start with the import. We'll copy this, and this is inside iOS runner app delegate Swift. So let's go inside the iOS runner app delegate Swift, and let's add this inside the import. First thing first, that's good. Next, we need to use the Flutter local notification plugin, and I will go back inside the code, and we need to add this right before that bullshit, right there. And now you just need to make sure that everything is aligned. So I will put some tabs like this. Perfect. The next thing is to add the other one, the if available, blah, blah, blah. We'll go back inside the code and right under the generate plugin registrant, we will paste this and do the same thing for the number of tabs like this and like that. Perfect. So now we can save the file and close the app delegate Swift. Let's go back inside the article. So let's scroll down. This is how it should look like. You can see that right there, I have a little difference. There is no tab for this one, but it doesn't really matter. Both ways works. Okay, so at this point, everything should work inside your app. One pro tip I have for you is if you have some sort of problems with your dependencies, for example, if you have a dependency inside your app that doesn't work with the local notifications, what you could do in order to fix this is you could run the flutter clean and after this you could run the flutter pub get once this is done so flutter pub get to add all the dependencies again this might solve the problem so next we are to the exciting part the code all right so we are ready to code this thing first thing first we need to initialize the notifications inside android and ios inside the code so for this, we'll need to create all of this inside the application. So let's start right now. So I will add the import local notifications, uh, Flutter local notification. And next we will add also the import time zone, time zone. The next thing we need to do is to go inside our code. So I will go inside my homepage. You can go inside your own app and you will need to create a init state. Inside the init state, we will create a future that just init the application. And after this, I will just copy paste for myself because it's faster, but you will need to create the notification plugin that use the Flutter local notification plugin. Perfect. The next thing you will need to do is to create the future function. And it will be just like this future reward. You will need to copy paste all of this by yourself. And if you go inside the documentation, you see it's exactly that. So you can copy the documentation also if you need. You can see that the init initialize time zone doesn't work. So for this, you will need to add the time zone data latest. So let me explain what this does. First thing first, I am setting this up for the America Toronto. If you have a different location, you will need to use this website. So the Wikipedia website, you can go inside this and you will see that you have all your time zone. So you can use your own time zone. Perfect. The other thing I need to mention is when you receive the notification, you will receive a logo inside the notification. And this logo is coming from this location. But where is it? So let's go inside Android. Then it will be inside REST. Then it will be inside Minimap or something like this. And you will see this will be the icon for the notification. If you want to change this, you can use the Flutter Launcher, Flutter Launcher icon package and modify this icon for your own. But you probably have something different. Just make sure that this is the good path. After this, you can see that we are also creating the iOS settings and we create the initialization settings with the Android and the iOS setting. Then we say await notification plugin, initialize with all this information. And now we are ready to use the notifications inside our app. So now if you restart the application, you will see that uh, local blah, blah blah has not been initialized that's boring shit so now what you will need to do is you will close your application and now you will relaunch the application and now when i'm running the application you can see that i have some sort of problem with the swift file error blah 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 cannot find this thing so I've, i have probably done a mistake inside the ios runner app delegate swift and what is this mistake okay so i see this little space like that I think this was the problem. So I will delete all the spaces and I will redo this like that. So I think this will be fine. So I will save. You see how little things can bug the application. It's crazy. 
Anyway, I will save again, I will close this, and I will relaunch the application. I think this time it will work. And it's building, and it has launched. Perfect. So that's good. Now you can see that we have this little pop-up saying, do you allow or not the notification? You need to say yes. And now that we have allowed the notifications, we can go back inside the article right there, and we need to follow the next step. So we have allow the notifications, and now we need to instant notification. We need to create this code. So you can create this future, and I will do the same thing inside the code. Right after the init, I will press and I will save this show instant notification. And now we will use this inside the code. So show instant notification. Let's go back inside the first one. This one is the instant notification field button. So show instant notification. The ID, we will put zero. It's a number. The title will be, I don't know, instant, instant notif. And the body will just be body for now. It doesn't matter. And now let's save and click instant notification. You can see that you have this right now. The next step is to create the scheduled notifications. But one thing I need to mention first is this code is very basic. Everything is inside the main.dart. This should not be the case for your application, okay? This is just to simplify everything and to make sure that you understand what we are doing. I just don't want to make this video a thousand hours. So what you should do is, by example, for my other application, which I set up the notification daily and at a certain time, I use an architecture. Personally, I use clean architecture and I set up all these notifications within clean architecture so I can handle all the problems and bugs. So I just want to mention this. Next, let's go back and we will be ready to scheduled notification. But first I need to explain you a little bit what the show instant notification does. So you have the show that will display a notification right now. And inside the show, you have an ID, a title, a body, and a notification detail. So by example, for the application I've showed you earlier, this application, I have created a notification for each day of the week at a certain time. And also, this means that you need to create a different ID for each of them. And you need to have a way to save this information locally, the ID, because if you want to delete this, you will need to delete all the scheduled notification also. Otherwise, the application will still do the notification. Perfect. So that is the ID. When you do an instant notification, the ID doesn't really matter because it will be done right now. So you can put zero by example. Next, you have the title and the body. This is when you trigger the application, you have the title and the body. After this, you have the notification details for Android and iOS. Android require a little bit more things and you can define the level of importance, the priorities, and also you define some sort of channel ID and channel name. Next, we are ready to move to the next step, which is the scheduled notification. So you can go inside the article and you can recreate this code. So this is just a picture, but you will need to recreate this. So let me do this behind the scene and I will just copy paste this thing. And now we have the scheduled reminder. So for this, we will need to create a time in the future that the notification will be created. For this, you can use the TZ date time now. So this will be right now. And after this, you will add a duration. So we will add a duration of three seconds inside this time. So this will be three seconds in the future. Next, we do a notification plugin dot zoned scheduled. And we scheduled with an ID. For the ID, if you want to have two different scheduled notification in your app, you need to use different IDs because if you use the same one, it will just like override over the first notification. So you will just have one. So make sure that you have different IDs each time you create a scheduled notification. Next, we have the same title and body and we have the scheduled date. This is the information we created before. The next thing is the notification details. So we have the same thing, Android and iOS, but next we have also the Android schedule mode. So this will be the inexact allow while blah, blah, blah. Doesn't really matter. It will be triggered at the good time, okay? Next, we have the match date time component. This is how often you want to trigger the notification. This example, we use the day of week and time, which means every week at the same day and at the same time, it will trigger the notification. So let's say we trigger the notification right now. We put the ID one and we say we want this every Monday at 12. 
this means that it will trigger the notification every Monday at 12. You can change this for other stuff. Times mean that it will be every day at the same time. So every day at 11. Day of month and time means every month, the same day at the same time. And after this, you have date and time, which mean every year at the same time. So we will keep using the same one, day of week and time. Doesn't really matter for now. So perfect. So now let's use this scheduled reminder inside our application. So I will create right there schedule notification. We need to put the ID. So for this, it's a number. I will say one and the title will be, let's say, schedule notif. I will put my same column and save. And now I don't see the body. So what I need to do is I need to say that the body is required. I forgot to set that. So required string body. And now we will put the body, body, and it will be just body like this and save. So now when we click on this, three seconds later, three, two, one, we have the notification. So you have created the scheduled notification. Crazy. But there are still other things that you need to consider when you create notification inside your app. For example, if you want to have your application worldwide, you can create time zone automatically. So you can use this code in order to create the time zone based on the phone user instead of putting always America Toronto. Next thing is maybe you want inside your app to have notification per day. So if you want the user to be able to define which day the notification will be created, like my application, then you will need to create this. Just remember that you will need to put a different ID for each notification. Next is you will need to grant notification access. So by example, if we go back at this thing, if the user have clicked don't allow, we don't need to set up notification because it will not work. We need to make sure that the user have click allow and the notification are allowed inside the application. So what you need to do is create some sort of logic that if you don't have the notification access granted, you need to grant them. If we go back inside my application and I remove all the notification and I go back inside the app, you will see that the code say grant notification access. So I cannot put notification until I go inside and I add the notification and I go back and I say verify. Now I can put the notifications. So you will probably need to create a logic like this. The fourth thing you will need to consider is to show the pending saved notification. Again, example inside this application, when you reset the application, you will always have this information saved inside the phone. So the user know exactly which notification are currently pending. If I click on this button, this button, this button, this button, this button, this will delete all the notification. So right now there is no scheduled notification inside the app and you need to keep track of this. Otherwise the user will receive a million notification and it will be confused and delete the application. So let's go back inside this. After this step number five, you will need to cancel the reminders. For example, if I go inside the app and I select a couple of them and then I say delete this uh, habit, then this will delete all the notification at the same time for this habit. At this point, you should have the scheduled and instant notification inside your app. This was the goal of this video. But if you don't want to go through the pain in the ass to set up all of this that I told you, you can have the entire code of this application. If you just want to copy paste my code, you can go on fluttermap.com, get the Flutter Pro course. I give you access to my entire app inside this course. And also you have access to part one and part two for beginners and for advanced Flutter dev. So this will save you a ton and a ton of time. By the way, this entire application is all built with clean architecture. So it's super easy to handle your data. And once you have access to this course, the only thing you have to do is you log in, you go inside your account, and then you go inside the downloads and you have access to my habit app. If you're already good with Flutter and you want to publish your own app or you have already published your own app, you should join the app founder circle. This is where we talk about marketing and app publishing. This is not for beginners. It's for people that are already good with Flutter and are ready to publish the app. Okay, so you can apply to this Discord. We don't accept everybody because we want to keep it tight. So we only have value people at this place. That's it. See you in the next one and bye-bye.